What is going on, everybody? I hope you're all doing amazingly well. Today, we're going to be talking about the things that I've learned about testing a one to seven risk reward and how you can take away this knowledge and basically decide between a high win rate strategy where you're not losing as often, but your wins are smaller, or a higher risk reward strategy um, and having a lower success rate as a result of that. Um, and it's going to really help you to understand which one will be suited to your needs better and help you make an informed decision about which one you think suits your personality more and you know the pros and cons of each um, and stuff like that. So stick around for that if that sounds interesting. But first of all, my name is Sam Lowe. I help struggling trainers break through to consistency. Um, I'd really appreciate you subscribing to the channel. If you're new here, got tons and tons of videos with tons of stuff planned um, and awesome um, ideas that you're going to like. I cover a lot of scalping content on here um, and day trading, um, but I'm a big I'm a big scalper, so lots of that sort of stuff. Um, I do have a link in the description box for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Can't take everyone on, but uh, I always leave the application box there. Um, and if you do decide to apply, uh, then as a thank you just for uh, applying, thank you for your time, uh, there is access to the free Telegram group chat. It is not a signals group, although I do share um, the occasional bit of analysis and answer your questions. So it's just a thank you for applying if you do choose to do so, because I cannot take everyone on in coaching uh, at this time. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about the pros and cons. So if you know me, you know that I love the one minute and the five minute. They are, in terms of scalping, they are just my favorite. I find them very easy to read, um, largely because I spent so long trying to learn them. Um, and so what I used to do is I first started off in trading with a one-to-one -one risk reward. Okay, so one-to-one -one risk reward, just like basically like that. Okay, so basically I was risking one percent or one multiple to make one. Okay. After that, I then went straight to a one to three risk reward. Okay, so something like this. And this is probably what I stayed on for the longest amount of time. Now, I really, really like the one to three, uh, but even then it took me a long time to adapt to it. And even now, sometimes it can be a little bit draining because the success rate is lower with a one to three. Okay, and I'm gonna explain why all of this is in just a second. Okay, the next one that I've been practicing recently, in fact, last week was the first week that I practiced it on my small live account, just so that the emotions were there, was a one to seven risk reward. Okay, now, if I thought the success rate was bad with a one to three, let me tell you, with a one to seven, it is on a whole other level. Okay, I started this week, I think, with about I think I started with five losses in a row. Then I had a win, which was seven R, so I was up for the week. Then I had nine losses in a row. Nine. Literally like nine losses. Now, even though I've been doing this for a while, I still, that for me is very, very difficult and psychologically draining to overcome because... I, because I'm going for more pips, I'm de demanding more out of the market. My probability of, of doing it just massively went down, down through the floor. And although when I back tested this, this actually ended up having the best returns, the one to seven, um, the amount of losses um, can really, really affect you. So it comes down to this. Okay, so let's start off with the one to one um, to one to 1 1.5 range. Okay. Okay. So the advantages of doing this is your win rate significantly higher. Okay. Now the reason for this is self-explanatory. You know, there is an equal chance that the market is going to move this much in this direction or this much in this direction. Okay. Now, provided you've got some, a bit of an edge that, you know, overall you're going to be more likely to go this way, then this is going to work really, really well. But when you start moving up the scale here, you are going to notice that you are requesting more movement. You're requesting it to go all the way up here instead of 
coming in and just going straight down. Okay. Or, you know, coming up a little bit would have hit a one to one and then coming down. Okay. That is what you are essentially risking. It's going to be harder to do that. So the one to one range, the, um, the win rate is going to be significantly higher. Now, why is this good? Well, especially if you're new or you're just, you struggle with emotions a lot. This will help you to, uh, this will help you to stay active and reduce emotions. Okay, now this will help you to stay active and reduce emotions because if you're if you have let's say a one to one risk reward ratio and you have a strategy that has you know seventy to seventy five percent success rate, which is very very possible, um, you are not going to be sitting through as many streaks of losses, uh, and that is really really good because it means that you're not going to kind of get in those ruts as often you know if you've ever been through a losing streak you'll know exactly what i mean you know where you're like oh well maybe my ability's not there maybe i need to work on this more maybe oh maybe i'm just not cut out for this you know you know what it's like you just get the in these ruts of emotional decision makings and blah blah blah, blah. okay now with this these kind of strategies and these risk rewards, you are going to get much less of that because you're going to be winning more often. Now, this is assuming that you're executing on this effectively, and that is a topic for another video. So if you want to watch some of my strategy videos, I've got plenty of those. So just go and check those out. But the one to one and the one to 1.5 range is where I'd actually recommend you stay until you are consistent. Um, depending on the amount of time that you have. If you don't have as much time, then you know, especially if you're scalping. Uh, then I would recommend a higher risk reward uh, setup because it's just gonna it's just gonna favor you for the long run. So, what are some of the negatives of this? Okay, let's also get rid of the bold. I'm not really a fan of that. Okay, so a negative, the main negative is you is it takes more wins to cover a loss. Okay, so here's an example. So if you have about a 75% win rate, that doesn't mean that you can't sit through, you know, two, maybe three losses in a row, okay? That can still happen. So let's just say you've lost three. Let's be really worst case scenario here. You've lost three trades uh, in a row, and, to that, and let's say you're risking 1% per trade, okay? You have lost 3%, okay? And now you need to go and take three more trades. You need to have three more wins just to get to break even. Okay, now, although you shouldn't be looking at this as a trader, it's difficult as a trader um, and it's very easy to slip into the mindset of trying to win back old losses and recover the account. Okay, and then so this is going to kind of transition into if you don't understand that trading is a game of probabilities and you just all your only job is to execute your plan effectively. So if you can do that, then this isn't really going to make that much of a difference. Okay. Because you just sit through the losses and you'll just keep executing your plan, keep executing your plan. Loss win doesn't matter. Keep executing, blah, blah, blah. So it is going to take more wins to recover a loss. So if you do have less, um, if you do have an occasional losing streak, which you will do, then you have got to be prepared for this because it is going to take more trades to recover that. Now on the flip side of this, Let's move up to a one to three risk reward. So for this, uh, the let's start with the positive of this leading on from the previous negative. If you have three losses in a row, it only takes one trade to get to break even again. Okay, so self-explanatory. Um, it only takes one trade to get to break even again. Okay, now that's really, really good. But okay, the other side of this, you're thinking, okay, well, obviously, like, why don't I just choose a one to three? Well, the only problem with that is that you are much more likely to have more than three losses in a row. Okay, because of the fact that you're demanding three times as much reward as you are risk. Whereas in the one to one or one to 1.5, you're demanding, you know, literally a third of that essentially roughly around there. Okay. And so your probability is going to go down. What does that mean? Well, lower, 
lower probability equals uh, higher chance of losing streaks. Okay. Now, if you make emotional decisions, okay, if you struggle with losing streaks, if you constantly need to modify your strategy, if you constantly can't get a grip of what exactly you need to do and how you need to do it, then this is going to be incredibly difficult to sit through because you are going to have a lot of losses, uh, you know, and all of this type of stuff. And it's going to be very difficult to sit through if you're not used to it. Okay. Uh, now, there are situations where you can have higher probability one to threes, um, but generally speaking, the more reward you seek out of the market, the less likely it is going to happen. Okay, now I'm going to come back to this um, for the uh, refix to this, okay, in just a second. Okay, now let's then move up to something like a one to seven. Well, this is self explanatory extremely low win rate uh, i think for a one to seven i'm not sure what is that so if you lose seven in a row um so i'm not let me just get my calculator up real quickly okay so we have so one divided by seven okay so right so you need to be right roughly 14 percent of the time okay so that means you can be wrong 86 percent of the time and still be profitable with this but the problem is if you let's just say you have a 20 percent uh a 20 percent success rate with this so one in every five trades on average you win okay so that's just on average so that's one in every five so you lose you know four win one for example so the problem with that is that is just the average Okay, and what is going to happen in the same way as with the one to one, even if you've got a 75% success rate, you know, you still you can still go through two, three, sometimes even four losses in a row, even with that percentage success rate. Now, if you've got a 20% success rate, your chance of having, you know, 10 losses in a row is actually incredibly high okay in fact it's uh, you know off the top of my head i think it's quite likely that you can have you know 15 losses in a row before you have a win okay now this won't always happen as in it's not going to just be you know like always going to be that kind of bad and have you know these huge streaks of losses and then no wins but occasionally that is going to happen and it's extremely it's much more likely to happen with this kind of strategy okay and so as I've been testing it this week, I've been struggling with this uh, understanding, especially because I've been applying it to the lower time frames. So I'm taking a lot of losses, one after the other, after the other, after the other. And if I'm being honest, by the end of the week, I was exhausted. I really couldn't um, get my get my head around it. I found it very difficult. And to be honest with you, I didn't actually find it that enjoyable. And so <clears throat> I've decided over the weekend after taking a bit of a break that uh, I am not going to be using this anymore. Uh, and it's because of this exact same thing. You know, I am not by any means the, you know, at the peak um, of my trading ability. I'm consistent i've been consistent for a while and i've overcome so many things but you know i am by no means the world expert on um trading by any means at all and so this for me i'm not ready for just yet now let's go back to the one to three quickly because i mentioned a fix for this if we know that it is easier and more likely for price to hit a one-to-one -one than it is for it to hit one to three or anything like this then what is the solution for reducing the amount of losses we take with a one to three well quite simply it's a one to one or one to 1.5 break even rule meaning as soon as it goes to a one to one so this is a 2.9 pip stop loss so if we just draw this out here 2.9 pips oh there we go so if we so it means as soon as price comes up here, we then move to break even, meaning even if it comes back down again, we are only being taken out for break even and we're not losing anything. So that's a really, really good way to get over it in a way that I managed to kind of transition from one to one, one to 1.5 to one to three. The only problem with this is that I found is 
can be more boring. Okay, if you are an excitement junkie and you love the excitement of the markets and you're very new, then I would advise going to the one to one, one to 1.5 because even with a break even rule, you're going to be getting loads of streaks of just break evens and losses, break even, loss, break even, loss, break even, loss, 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 break even, break even, break and win. You know, it's going to be, you're going to go through these kind of periods. Okay. And so um, it can be very, very boring just getting break evens and you kind of feel like you're not really making any headway. Um, and so if you like feeling more engaged, then this is what I'd recommend for uh, you know, the more impatient type and the person who finds it more kind of exciting and doesn't like to sit through the losses as much. Okay. This is a really nice middle ground for everybody else who is kind of ready to, um, you know, have kind of that safety net of having a one to three so that, you know, when you do win, you win bigger. Um, and then this is for, you know, if you're, if you're just crazy and you know you can cope with all of the emotions then by all means do a one to seven um i'd say overall my favorite not that i've actually used it in a while is a one to 1.5 okay now the reason is because you're asking for more than you're losing but not so much so that it damages the success rate that much depending on the strategy okay so this i'd say is a really good place to start and then slowly transitioning it to maybe a one to two, one to 2.5, and then one to three. Okay, that's what I would advise. <clears throat> I found occasionally when if you just catch a, um, a move that's just um, turning around or changing direction, let's see if we can find an example, right? So back here, if we had seen, um, I don't know, like this break, for example, this is obviously not how I trade, but, uh, and then we, you know, we saw this break up here, we see it sort of form a level here, uh, and then we looked to take this and we were like, right, okay, look, we've changed direction now um, and it's more likely that it's going to go up, you know, and then we could target, you know, one to five, something like that would work pretty well in my opinion. Okay. And, um, but yeah, again, you're not going to catch that every time. It's going to be a lot rarer than anything else. Um, and so, yeah, so that would be my advice for that. I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode. Um, let me know what you think of this in the comments, which one you are kind of leaning towards. Is it the one to 1.5, the one to three? Let me know below uh, and why uh, you feel that way. And yeah, I really hope that you've enjoyed. Smash the like button if you did. Um, and take it easy, guys. Happy trading. I will see you very, very soon.